What's up guys, this is Alex from the Duran, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at how Viktor Orban and Hungary have been punished by the EU for daring to take on George Soros. All right, so we're gonna take a look at two videos. Um, the first one is actually Farage's reply um, and his defense of Victor Orban's speech. So I'm gonna show you the Farage one first. Nothing I can say would ever top how Farage crushes the EU parliament members who are bought off and paid off by George Soros. And make no mistake about it, the reason Orban is being punished and the reason Hungary is being punished is because Orban dared to take on George Soros. That's why they are and they have indeed um, voted to trigger Article 7. Now, Article 7 is, is referred to as the nuclear option. And what it basically means is that the EU is going to now be able to sanction an EU member state. So they'll be able to impose all kinds of restrictions on Hungary now. Um, so this is the EU sanctioning their own member. And that's why they call it the nuclear option. Now, it still needs to go to the European Council and they need four-fifths of the voting in order to actually implement Article 7. So it's going to go, so the Parliament voted to trigger it, and now it's going to go to the European Council and they're going to vote whether they want to implement it. And the European Council is made up of Juncker and Tusk, the two unelected bureaucrats, as well as the, as the heads of states of all the member states. And now we're going to see Farage's speech first, and then we're going to see Orban's fiery, defiant speech to the EU Parliament. Orban knew what was coming, but he went to uh, the EU Parliament, he went to the lion's den, he spoke to them and he told them that Hungary cannot be blackmailed. It's not gonna be blackmailed on immigration, it's not gonna be blackmailed on how to handle George Soros and to kick out George Soros. It's not gonna be blackmailed and that was the message that Orban gave. Anyway, take a look at the video, uh, let us know what you think, click on that notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video and visit the Duran shop, help support the Duran. Until next time, take care. For the EDFF, Mr. Farage. Well, Mr. Orban, thank God there's at least one European leader prepared to stand up for his principles, his nation, his culture, and his people. In the face of such extreme bullying, thank God you're there, is all I can say. The and I'm sure for Hungarians of a certain age, today will have brought back many dark memories. You're here at a show trial where a bunch of political non-entities get up and point the finger and scream, enjoying themselves with their afternoon hate. And the chief prosecutor, the commissar that comes from the unelected government, he has the audacity, he has the audacity to lecture you on democracy. You don't know what you're talking about. The fact that you've got 50% of the vote in your country and that no one has ever voted for Timmermans or can't remove him seems to have passed him by. How many times have you and the, and the, he's also telling you you're not getting your judicial appointments right, you've got to change things. This the man who's one of the bosses of a European Commission that appoints Martin Selmar driving a coach and horses through all the rules that exist here. You're being told what is really happening here, Mr. Orban, is they're just updating the Brezhnev doctrine of limited sovereignty. There's no point pretending in this union you're independent. There's no point pretending you run your own country. And Article 7 is the new method of adopting that. They want to strip you of your voting rights. They want to stop giving you European funding. And all of it because you have the audacity to stand up to George Soros, the man who has poured $15 billion all over the world in trying to break down the nation states, to get rid of our traditional forms of democracy. And in Hungary, of course, he spent money to promote illegal immigration into your country, and you, quite rightly, have stood up to him and closed him down. I wish we all did the same. Mr. Orban, you keep saying, you want to stay a member of this European Union. But it's not just your country that's been insulted today. You've been insulted today. It's time to be more logical. Come and join the Brexit club. You'll love it. <laughs> the 
The floor now goes to the Prime Minister of Hungary, Mr. Viktor Orban. President, honourable members, I know that you have already made up your mind. I know that a majority will approve the report, and I know that my speech here today will not manage to change your opinion. Still, I have come here today because you are not going to condemn a government, but a country as well as a nation. You are going to denounce Hungary that has been a member that has been a member of the family of Christian European nations for a thousand years. You're going to condemn Hungary that contributed to the great history of Europe with hard work and shed its blood when needed. You're going to denounce Hungary that rebelled and took to arms against the biggest army of the world, the Soviet army, and shed its blood for freedom and democracy. And when time came, opened its borders to fellow Eastern German friends. Hungary has fought its battles for freedom and democracy. And I stand here today and see those are the ones to accuse Hungary who inherited democracy, who did not have to take personal risks in order to obtain liberty. They are the ones who want to condemn the anti-communist democratic resistance in Hungary. Honourable members, I stand here in front of you and I defend my country because for Hungarians, liberty, democracy, independence and Europe are questions of honour. This is why I say that the report in front of you insults Hungary and insults the honour of the Hungarian nation. Hungary's, Hungary's decisions are taken by voters at parliamentary elections, and you state nothing less but that Hungary is not reliable enough to decide what is in its interest. You believe you know better than Hungarians themselves what they need. Therefore, I have to say that this report does not give due respect to Hungarians. This report uses double standards, abuses power and goes beyond competences. Its methodolo methodology and its approval violates the treaty. Honourable members, in Hungary, democracy and liberty are not political issues but moral ones. And you want to take a moral decision on the basis of majority in numbers and brand a country condemn a nation. You shoulder serious responsibility when first in the history of the EU you want to exclude a nation from European decisions. You would strip Hungary of the right to represent its interest in the European family where it belongs to. We do have contentious issues and we will have in the future. We have a different picture about the nature of Christianity in Europe, about the role of nations and national culture. We think differently about the essence and purpose of the family and we do endorse radically different views on migration. If we mean that we want United uh, Europe to be united in diversity, then uh, these differences cannot be a reason to brand any of the countries and to, for it to be excluded from joint decisions. We would never go as far as silencing those who do not agree with us. President, you want to exclude a country which made clear decisions in the European elections. Mm -hmm. In 2009, uh, a majority of 56 percent, and in 2014, a majority of 52 percent voted for us. We are the most successful party of the European Parliament. Our opponents, socialists and liberals, are not happy to see our success. This is understandable. But to take revenge on Hungarians because they did not choose them is not fair and it's not worthy of Europeans. This report was written by people 
who are not clear on basic facts. The report uh, accepts that uh, there was no investigation of facts, there was no official delegation sent to Hungary. The report uh, contains 37 serious factual misrepresentations of which we sent a document of 108 pages to every member of this House. Our union is uh, held together because we settle disputes in a regulated manner. I have entered into accords and compromises uh, with the Commission on the media law, on uh, the judicial system and uh, on some passages of our Constitution. This report is a breach of agreements made years ago. If you can do this and you can breach these agreements, what's the point in making agreements with any European institution? What you are doing here is a slap in the face of the uni Union and uh, of constructive dialogue. Every nation, every member state has the right to organize its life in its own country. We will protect our borders and we will decide who to live together with. We have built a fence, we have stopped illegal migrants, hundreds of thousands of them. We have defended Hungary and we have defended Europe. This is the first case in the history of Europe when a community condemns its own border guards. President, let's be straightforward with each other. Hungary is going to be condemned because Hungarian people have decided that this country is not going to be a country of migrants. With all due respect, but very firmly, I have to refuse the threats the blackmailing, the defamation by forces supporting immigrants and migrants against uh, Hungary and Hungarian people. I must uh, state that whatever the, your decision will be, Hungary will not accede to this blackmailing. Hungary will protect its borders, stop illegal migration and will defend its rights. If needed, we will stand up to you too. We stand ready for the elections next May, where people can decide on the future of Europe and restitute democracy to European politics. Thank you very much.